This AI is insane and scary. Normally you'd say this and not repeat that for another two years, but it hasn't even been two months since DALL-E 2 came out and already another AI has outdone it. This is Imagine. AI is taking on many fields that are traditionally run by humans, but for the most part, it has been process-driven applications like helping doctors or engineers with solving a problem like looking up a scan or making a measurement, but creating something that's never been built before and would be aesthetically pleasing to a human being has never been done before. And this is the new frontier that AI has now conquered. See, art has always been out of its reach, but now even that is falling for it. The resulting images that you can see did not exist in this data set used to train this AI. All these images have been generated by AI, only taking a few words as input. Human beings have evolved over thousands of years to gather information from what we see. Every image that we see provokes an emotion inside of us. And this is why we remember people by their faces, not just by their names. And this is exactly why Google's Imagine is so scary and insane. Because it provokes an emotion inside of you, just like a real work by a human being would. See, it's the photorealism that really gets you. The beauty of Imagine is is that it can create images that have never existed before out of a simple text input and these images are photorealistic. It was created by training a neural network using deep learning. It not only understands individual objects but it also learns from the relationship between them. If you were to ask Imagine to create an image of sushi, it would create that but it would also know how it relates to other objects and it would draw it in a photorealistic way. Let's see this image as an example. A cute corgi lives in a sushi house. And when you look at this image, you must ask yourself, how did the AI decide what lighting to use for this scene? How did it know to depict sushi in this manner? And then be able to build a house with it? What would that look like? How did it make that creative decision to depict that in a certain way? How did it know that a cute corgi would look like that in this scene? If you think about it, these are the kinds of decisions that a real artist would make. And that is the most incredible and fascinating part about this new text to image generator. Imagine is a text-to-image diffusion model that builds on the power of large transformer language models in understanding text and then generating high-fidelity images. It uses a T5 XXL encoder to encode the input text into text embeddings. We will uncover a bit later what this means, but for now, think of it as a numerical representation that makes sense to the AI. This embedding is then used to generate an image, which is then upscaled to result in a full resolution image. Text to image models need powerful text encoders to capture the complexity and compositionality of natural languages. These can either be trained on paired image text data or large language models that are trained on text only corpus which is a lot more significant in size than paired image text data available on the internet. This is key in understanding why Imagine does the text to image generation so well compared to its competitors. Editors. It's because the researchers chose a large text-only language model called T5XXL. Now this language model was selected because human beings preferred the resulting image used from these text-only large language models compared to the paired image text models. So T5XXL is a text-to-text -text transformer that is capable of language modeling or filling in missing words and it has millions of parameters that help it to achieve this. So we touched on embeddings before and how it is full of information and makes sense to the AI as it is a numerical representation of the data that we are inputting into the model. See this representation into a vector is how the AI is able to take that information and make sense out of it and it is indicative of the intelligence of the model too. See if there's two texts that are similar to each other their embedding would also result in a similar vector. Using this embedding we can then generate an image. This is done through diffusion. So how diffusion models work is they take an input say a photo and they gradually add noise to it in iterative manner until 
well, it's just noise and there's no more photo. And then what they do is they try to generate the original image out of this noisy image that has been generated slowly to an iterative manner. This is how they learn to generate different images or any other data that's required. So, so far we took a text input, we turned it into a text embedding and then we used that embedding to generate a 64 by 64 image using diffusion. So 64 by 64 image is very small and it's not very useful but if we were to generate a bigger image straight away it would use a lot more computation power. Therefore at the very first step imagine only generates a small image and then uses another diffusion model to upscale it to a 256 by 256 image. After this 256 by 256 image is generated then another diffusion model takes this and upscales it to a 1024 by 1024 pixel image. Since the diffusion models are cascaded it makes it less computationally intensive and at each step noise is added to the image generated in the last step so that diffusion can work its magic again and upsample the image. This technique is called noise conditioning augmentation and it is the result of this technique that results in a high fidelity image at the output of the whole process. Classifier free guidance is another technique that the researchers use during this process from generating an image out of text and you can read more about that using the link below in the description. Another key thing to understand here is the use of thresholding. Since the diffusion model is applied on its own output iteratively throughout the process, it can produce unnatural looking images. To combat that, the researchers used a technique called dynamic thresholding. It pushes saturated images inwards at every single iteration of the process. Therefore, it actively prevents pixels from getting saturated. This results in significantly better photorealism as well as better image to text alignment. Okay, so now we got one image, but how does Imagine generate different variations of the same image? See, variation means keeping the main elements of the image as they are, but changing trivial details. In Imagine, this is done after the original 64 by 64 image has been generated. By using different prompts building on the original text input, the researchers using classifier free guidance can generate different images in the higher resolution models. For example, changing a photo of into an oil painting of results in a big difference. But how do you evaluate the quality of the image that's been generated by this model? Well, you can do that either through some mean percentage error, but that is too simple and wouldn't really result in any helpful measurement. So the researchers asked human beings to assess the model and the human beings preferred Imagine's output to every other text to image AI out there. The Coco validation set is a similar benchmark and it also preferred Imagine over every other AI. So the model is good, it's generating images as we expect it to and it's employing creativity that's just blowing our minds. But what are the risks to a model like this? Given that it was trained on data that was scraped from the internet, there are biases that are built in that already exist on the internet. So you will see gender bias in profession representation and another risk is that this could be used to generate fake images that could then cause obvious pain to a lot of people. So while Google did their best to train this AI using as clean data as possible, they found that one of the data sources was actually full of pornographic and hateful content. So they're not letting the public use this. So given that we understand what the risks are with doing something like this, why even bother? Thing is, Imagine has enabled the researchers to understand how a better text to image model can be generated. They've already found that scaling the size of the language model used has a bigger impact than scaling the size of the image diffusion model. And they've already improved this text to image generation process in terms of its speed, in terms of its scalability, and in terms of its efficiency. The other benefit is that eventually these models will help extend human creativity. It will also allow us to take away these biases from these models over time. Thank you for watching. Catch you guys next time.